Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to a weekly recap of the three races that uh, I participated in the Downshift Racing League. The first race, I should actually make mention that uh, Tuesday races are an every other kind of week thing. Um, week one is normally an all-American classic race hosted by Magnum Star, where it's American classic cars from the 1960s and 1970s with no traction control and no ABS. Uh, but on the off weeks, week two is where I host a race, where it is essentially a spec series. So you have a certain car, and there's no tuning involved whatsoever. That is the race that we are on here today for the first race of three, uh, part of this recap. So that is the Renault Megane Trophy 11. Not the RS, not the GT, no, the Group 4, but just the standard 2011 model on Circuit de Saint Croix. And this is on the Layout B. This race was actually quite fun, as all spec races are, because it's incredibly, incredibly close through pretty much the entire race. It's If you make a single mistake, you have like five people pass you at once. So it's just, it's very close racing, and it's incredibly exhilarating, incredibly exciting. I had qualified decently. I don't think I qualified first. I think it was second. But through the entirety of the first couple laps, it is myself amongst a group of yellow cars. I like to make my own livery and everybody else just kind of uses kind of a standard one here. So this one was just, it was really fun, those first couple of laps. And Ring was actually somehow, some way, we were making fun of him a little bit. I don't know how he quite pulled away. He must have had just a couple of better lines through it. And when it comes to these races, uh, you can pit stop if you'd like. But with this, most races I like to stick on hard tires and put it on fuel saver mode so you can go all through the race without any pit stops. This one was a little bit interesting because I thought everybody was kind of on the same mentality and then we get to about lap four or five and suddenly ring pits. And then Landers and then Shio and... And suddenly I'm running out in front going, oh my, I guess I was the only one who had this idea. So now I'm just racing the time itself. I'm just trying to keep a good pace, a good solid pace. You know, as the laps ticked away, you know, the <laughs> Shio and Ring were very quickly closing the gap as it went through. There is a moment here that I'll actually let play out where my wife decided to have a little bit of fun. Oh, open it, dude. Open it. Beep beep. You know, if you know what I mean. Right. <laughs> I don't want to get hmm. too far over. I'm like, I don't want to hit the wall, but he's right there. Dang it. You guys are getting a f assist over here because my wife's in here poking at me and trying to mess me up for you. So you better. <laughs> so you guys better Venmo her or something. Grab his wheel! Grab his wheel! <laughs> oh, dude, I went to a <laughs> Grab his dick! Yeah, this is <laughs> <funny. laughs> <coughs> Thankfully, my uh, wife's antics did not cost me any time, but as this was playing out, I'm constantly playing with the fuel saver. Just, you know, do should I be on fuel mode 4 or 5? But then as I start rolling it back, I start seeing the time tick away between my position and the interval to Shio so I try to roll it up further so I could get a little bit more power get a little bit more speed and then I would see that I wouldn't quite have enough laps to make the end so I'd roll it back a little bit so I was constantly adjusting it as my hard tires were just slowly being eaten away and then Shio and Ring's soft tires were just taking them to the next level it was they could smell the blood in the water because every couple of laps they would you know, be making fun, saying, oh, we're catching you, Wespy. And not very often do we do this, but in this situation, I was dead silent from lap six onward. It was just, it was all the brain cells on board focusing on making sure that I was hitting the lines correctly, that I was not making any single mistake through all of it. I think it got away with a couple, but by the end, this is what happened. Close. This is my iffy one. Coming off this section. This is my iffy one. 
Oh. Oh. It's getting there. Oh, yeah. It's right getting there. there. You son of a bitch. It's not over until it's over. Shio's always the last. Where's your oh, overtake now? Come on. Where's throw your overtake block, button now, block. mother? <laughs> yeah! Yeah! <laughs> oh. That was brilliant. You know what a bad loser is? Well, West is what's called a bad winner. Yes! <laughs> Race number two, we were on Sardegna Windmills in Group B cars. Our Thursday races used to normally be just a limited to 600 horsepower pro-tuned car. And uh, in this situation, we have recently decided to change it up a little bit, start doing some Group B, which honestly I was a little bit hesitant towards. I'm not hugely familiar with uh rallying as a whole i mean if you ask me to do it as a super license test or whatever i'll grind through it i'll take a thousand attempts and i'll finally get it but uh i think this is going to be a very good experience for me to just get down into the dirt get used to being able to flick it outwards and just be able to you know go on and i'll be honest for our sunday race we're also racing group b cars but on mount panorama I was practicing that track, and then the day came up where it was like, oh, we're on Sardegna Windmills, and I go, oh, crap. So prior to, I had a lot of help from Shio to be able to tune this car up and get it ready for the dirt, and I qualify poorly. I qualified, I want to say, sixth. And Magnum Star qualified seventh, but reverse grid order, so we started out... Uh, leading the race, so I was telling Magnum to just drive, to just get whatever gap he can, and I'd would, I would follow him through. And just hope to God that we were able to stick it out. Uh, it did not last long. Uh, my car hit a bump. It did not turn the way that I wanted to, and it turned the wrong way into a corner, and thus a massive pile up from everybody. And then finally, the natural order of things quickly came through where I jumped down to the bottom. And for whatever reason, I could not keep the car facing the right direction. I was constantly spinning out, constantly having problems. And I'll have a counter up somewhere in a time lapse, not a time lapse, a montage of all my spinning out because it was not good. Why? Oh, my God. No. Nope. Why am I spinning out again? <laughs> uh. <laughs> Fuck. Oh. So finally, you know, as the laps tick down, uh, that my lap times are not even remotely good. The fastest lap that I had was the 123.5. The fastest actual race time was the 114.7. And I could not keep the car on the track. You know, I got lapped a couple of times there, and it's just a very shameful, disgraceful race I would rather completely forget about, if I'm honest. Uh, turns out, after the fact, when I finally crossed the line an hour and a half later it felt like um my car was although i did have a lot of tuning assistance from shio the one thing that i didn't have him check was the body height adjustment i had lowered it down for mount panorama and i had not risen it back up for the rally event so the car kept on bottoming it out did have did not have any suspension travel whatsoever so it just the wheels would hit the fenders and the car would bottom out and then it would just have nowhere to go and it just it would just grab it and spin it every day with this group is a great learning experience in my mind and this was one of those moments where it's like you know you can tune it as best as you can but if you don't have the fundamentals down like you're a rally car so you should have a lawn suspension travel all these fine two adjustments are not going to be any good whatsoever So the Sunday race finally falls upon us. 
where again it is group b cars on mount panorama now in this situation again it was kind of an interesting one we have 12 laps you have to use race hard tires and you really have to worry about your fuel so immediately part of my philosophy that i described part of the tuesday's race is seeing if i could do a no stop race you know pit stops aren't required but they're heavily recommended so in this situation i thought i would try something different out you know throw it on fuel mode six and just drive first lap or so was kind of chaotic as i knew that everybody else around me is going to be faster but i wanted to defend for a position if at all possible but when it came down to the straightaways, there was just absolutely no competition. This thing just did not have the likes that everybody else had. So uh, part of the first lap issues that we have is there are just so many cars in a very small amount of area. Uh, it was inevitable that uh, collisions were going to occur. And this situation is between mainly Shio and Ring, where Shio was able to get away with absolutely demolishing Ring's race. And... In hindsight, I kind of regret this decision, but at the same time, too, I felt like justice needed to be served. What? That was just, I was just cleaning your taillights. There, I uh, evened it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, but he didn't get a penalty. Ah, I got yeah, a penalty, though. That was four seconds? Wow. That was just a <laughs> tiny bump. What the hell? Jeez. I believe that really hindered my race quite poorly you know it was just i might have been loosely in contention but that moment was it was, it was completely done so the entirety of the race i was just again kind of focusing on the lap times focusing on making sure that my hard tires were not really going to fall off but again the main 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 focus was figuring out what the perfect fuel level was going to be I think at the beginning, I was still trying to figure that out, so I had a little bit too high, and I checked a couple of laps later, and I had not enough fuel left, so then I put it on massive fuel conserve mode, and it came back, and then I had way too much, so then I started pulling it back. So it was just this constant kind of back and forth, as I'm just in a little bit of a weird no man's land for the moment. And then the pits started to happen, and I didn't think much of it, where it's just like, okay, they're going to pit, they're going to come out in front of me, not a big deal. But then their pits took a while, and then suddenly I ended up in second place. And I'm just second, and sitting there thinking to myself, I mean, I'm here. There's a potential that I can defend for a position, but at the same time, when they're on soft tires and when they don't have to care about their fuel, it's going to be no competition down the straightaway. They're just going to half me. So it's, I'm going to try my best to make sure Sector 2 is as clean as possible. But then when it comes to the back straight and the main straight, it just, I, I, I can't do anything about it, you know? So for the most part, I was trying to, you know, just keep it clean, defend for position where I can, you know, keeping myself ahead in the sector two and being able to have those repetitions down were very good because I was able to keep people behind me, but I knew it was all going to be in vain where I knew by, by the back straight that they would just fly by. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, there was a situation though where uh, ring ended up behind me after a couple of issues whether it be the pit stop or penalties of his own I, mean, I can't remember offhand but i remember seeing at one point that he was 10 seconds back on this is an easy podium i just need to hold it back not a big deal but at the end of the lap he went from 10 seconds behind to six seconds and i'm like well that's that's it there's again no no dealing with this so i was hoping that the mistakes would creep in a little bit more i might have been able to keep third place but again he him down the main straight and on the back straight just really flew by but uh when it came to the last lap again i was just just hoping i was within a couple of seconds might have made something happen uh he had a penalty that i had to serve down the main down the back straight and i just crept up crept up got as close as i could i threw it down in the fuel mode one expecting that nothing would happen but you never know and I was able to run the fuel out right as I crossed the line, but I was still a couple of seconds back. I was only two seconds behind Ring. So props to you, Ring. That was a very, very good last uh, last bit there. So not always does the no-stop strategy work out. If I didn't have a wall penalty and if I didn't punt Shio, I potentially would have been a couple of seconds ahead of Ring.
but we can sit here and talk what if what if what if all we can but at the end of the day the only thing that matters is what you did and what the results of that race are so again a very interesting week you know i celebrated the hell out of my my win on tuesday i tried to figure it forget thursday as much as i could and then i had a fairly decent race on sunday so you know that's the way it goes so if you guys enjoy this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more of this. Uh, let me know down in the comment section if you like these kind of weekly recaps, if you think I should continue doing them, or if you're just here for the Friday videos, I completely understand if you are. So again, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day today. Take care. Bye.